All right, it's time for Caps Corner, brought to you by Great Clips. We've got the coach, Dave Wanstead, in with us today on a football Friday. Coach, let's talk about 48 my hours. My, my shoes? Your shoes oh, are okay. awesome. I just noticed them. there. Uh, Those are awesome. Okay, that's right. I'm an ultra boost <laughs> guy. I'm also a Jordan guy. But Uni University of Miami. Right. We, we Those are hurricane shoes. We had a uh, university or a uh, national championship reunion. I couldn't make it, so I got me a nice little swag bag. You know? Yeah, that's awesome. Right. like those a lot. All right, so we're 48 hours away from Tua, Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddell, Bradley Chubb, Jeff Wilson's in their backfield. Like, that team's loaded. If you were coaching the Bears and you got this new player, Chase Claypool, how quickly do you ramp him up and really get him involved? Well, he'll be able to do some things. I mean, you know, because really the NFL, I mean, there's a lot of carryover from team to team. It's really just a matter of the terminology. But they can put him in there and play pass and, and throw him the ball deep. I mean, you know, that's simple. Uh, the Dolphins are actually going through the same thing on their side with Bradley Chubb, who you mentioned. So uh, I remember, you know, we, we traded for Charles Haley uh, the Tuesday before our opening game. We were going to play the Redskins on Sunday night. They had just won the Super Bowl. And Charles Haley played, but we just used him in third down. So if you take that to an offensive perspective, you could say, you know what? All you're going to do is go in on third down, or maybe it's first down for the play action passes. And these are the five plays, you know, Chase, that you got to know. And this is what we're going to call, and we'll be coaching you up on the sideline, let you know what's coming. So he'll be able to handle that, no question about it. Okay, the Bears are maybe the best running team in the league. Cleveland's good with Nick Chubb, I get it. How do you continue to pound away with the run game when – on the other side, every week they're watching that tape go, we're taking that away. Well, it'll be interesting to see. This is, this is the challenge that the Bears have this week. Is it, The Bears are not very good at stopping the run. Okay, that's we would say that they've struggled in that area. Uh, but Miami doesn't really want to run the football. So how, how will Miami beat you is throwing the ball with all the players that you mentioned. So this will be a week where the safeties will be deep. I expect the Bears to play a two-deep shell. In other words, put the guys deep, have the corners off, and try to prevent the big play from the Dolphins. Well, when your safeties are out of the box and they're deep, 18, 20 yards deep, now you're, you're challenging the Miami Dolphins. Now, here's the good news for the Bears. The Dolphins are 29th in the league in running the football. They have been very, very average. That's the weakness of their offense. So I think that the Bears' defense can match up with seven guys, keep those four guys deep, and we got to stop the run with the up-front seven. If there was ever a week to do it, this would be the week. Okay, so if I'm Miami and I look and go, boy, that Brisker's way over there. These guys are all back there. Hand it off. Got to hand it off. And the other one, too, uh, help me out with his name. I should know him. He's a Penn State guy, the tight end uh, from Miami. Uh, oh, Mike Gusecki. Mike Gusecki. Keep an eye on him. This guy is a big-time athlete for tight end. Yeah. And he is going to be working on your linebackers. They're going to send everybody deep. Keep everybody off of it, and that underneath coverage, and we don't have no Roquan, so it'll be new guys in Right, there. who could run and cover. Now it's going to be Gusecki matched up versus linebackers underneath. That's what I would look for if I was at Miami. If we can't get the ball deep and we can't run it, Gusecki's my guy. Right, and then you have that guy out there doing the gritty and doing all his I dances. Ho I hope he's not doing that, I, yeah. because that means he touched on. Yeah, exactly. That's what it means. Okay, let's go back to the trade of Roquan. A week ago, we were talking about him breaking down in tears that they traded Robert Quinn. Right. And then he gets traded, and Eddie Jackson spoke yesterday and said we were stunned. It absolutely, you know, sent shockwaves through the locker room. Does that affect you when you take the field on Sunday? Uh, not mentally, no. No, not mentally. It, it uh uh, physically, because Ropon was leading the NFL in tackles, you know right. what I mean? So let's not slight that too much. But you know what? There's always more to the story. And I learned this our first or second year in the league, is that if a player, if someone's trying to trade a player, or if someone's cut a player and he's out there as a free agent, g give the team that he was with a little bit of credit. 
In other words, the Bears know more about Roquan than the Baltimore Ravens do. Great and, point. And there's always more to the story. Now, the other side of the coin is, you know, we the Steelers are saying the same thing. We picked up, you know, with Chase, with uh, Claypool. The, Claypool. So, you know, but with Roquan, you know, there had to be, they had to feel we're going nowhere in these negotiations. You know, this is going to be, we, we don't want to get into the franchise tag. This thing is going nowhere. It's a dead end street. Let's take the draft pick and move on. And Ryan Poles was on with my guys, Waddle and Sylvie, and he said to them, look, I did not see any way to resolve this. Yeah, I had no go. interest in franchise tagging him. Yep. I can see that. It is what it is, and we like him. He's a good player. Good luck. We're moving on. Yeah, and, and you know, it, yeah, exactly. And uh, I'm, I'm sure he knew that, uh, was getting wind of that beforehand, you know. But to, to me, this all comes down to not having an agent. You know, he should have been signed up, signed, sealed, and delivered last year. June before we even went to training camp and so I got to look at him and say hey you know what you kind of brought this on yourself no question about it all right let's talk about the Bears offense yep. from the start of the year which really struggled to where we are today I was watching tape of Brian Baldinger doing a breakdown he said no team in the NFL offensively has improved more than the Chicago Bears do you agree I agree and the two things that we're doing differently the obvious is quarterback runs. And when any time you say quarterback runs, everybody wants to think dropping back and scrambling. That's not what I'm talking about. You know, we, we talk about it when we do the games. I mean, they're running quarterback draw. They're running quarterback counter. They're running quarterback sweeps. You know, these are all plays that they work on and have on the call sheet. So the combination of quarterback designed runs and moving passes. We've almost got away from the drop back pass which is beautiful at this stage of the game i mean right now we are boots waggles move it uh screens at a tight end screens at a halfback screens at a receiver i mean we got plenty of offense i would just hope that my man luke gets he just don't get bored keep doing what you're doing and just do it better and if they take that away is justin this year with that offensive line and what he's working with we're not going to put him in the pocket, but that's something coming next year. Yeah, it's it's going to have to come, you know, I mean, I because obviously you, you're not going to be able to run forever. But where they're at right now, uh, there's a lot of teams that should look at the Bears that are struggling. You know, the Pittsburgh Steelers should look at the Bears and say, what are they doing on offense? We probably should be doing this. I could probably list you five teams right now that are wasting time trying to stay with the old drop back system and the quarterbacks getting hit in the mouth and it's a mess where they sh the Bears hey identified this quick they said this is what we can do this is what we can't do let's get better at what our players can do give them a chance to be successful so hats off to these offensive coaches I think last thing defensively no Roquan and no Robert Quinn yeah it's just not a really good defensive group how bad could it get well I I, I don't think it'll, it will you know it, we're, we've been hot and the only thing that's missing and and they're probably not they're not going to be able to do it this pressure week, is pressure and what did they do the last couple of weeks to create pressure blitzed right mm -hmm. they, one time it was Eddie Jackson one time it was Brister one time it was Roquan they brought pressure and played man that means there's only one safety we're bringing an extra guy you do that against the Miami Dolphins, you are asking for a quick touchdown. I mean, that is not something you want to do this week. So, hey, it's going to be three and four man rush this week, and we got to get there, and we got to make Tua get the ball out. Sounds like a lot of points might be scored both ways. Both ways. It could be, it could be a high scoring game both ways. I like that. All right, we'll have some fun. We'll be with you on Sunday when that game goes final. You flip right back here to NBC Sports Chicago. Coach Alex Brown-Lance Briggs and I will break it all down. You'll hear from Matt Eberflus and Justin Fields.